There's a calm that covers me When I kneel down at your feet It's a place of healing It's a place where I find freedom There's a place my eyes can't see over us this morning as we do come to worship Jesus the Christ as our Savior as our Lord as we come to to sit before his throne letting go of the week that's passed and just being still let us go to the Lord in prayer Loving Heavenly Father, we do come this morning. We come to worship you. Not because we feel like it's something we're obligated to do, but God, because we love you. God, we reach out our hands to you. Not only do we reach out our hands, but we lift our hearts up to you. God, we come today asking you to empty us of ourselves. God, there's no other way to say it, but Lord, clean out the junk that's in us so that we can be filled with you. That when people look at us, they don't see us, but they see Christ shining through and God help us get to the point where we just can't help it it's just not something that we do it's so much of who we are God we come to worship we come to sing our songs to sing our praise God we come to shout our name your name 
Gracious God, we come today and we lift up our brothers and sisters at Palestine and New Liberty churches as they gather for worship today. May you, just like you meet us here, may you meet them there. God, don't let us leave here today with an attitude of consumers like, eh, that was okay. But God, we pray that your Holy Spirit work and that we leave here today knowing without a shadow of a doubt that we met Christ. That we felt Christ, that peace that calmness watch over us. That we felt that comfort for those of us who come today searching for comfort. God, that we found the hope, those who are looking for hope in the midst of such darkness in the world. God, it would be so easy to be discouraged. And God, as we began to pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, not let it be just empty words, but let it be the cry of our heart to you as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us not our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And would you please stand and join us as we sing How Firm a foundation. Sweet. 
you remain in control in the middle of the war you got my soul you alone are the anchor where my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm in the eye of the storm you remain in control Bye. 
this morning. May we be overwhelmed by God's goodness, His mercy, His love towards us all. To hear the word of God from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, be united and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. 
Therefore God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names so that at the name of Jesus everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth might bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my loved ones, just as you always obey me, not just when I am present, but now even more while I'm away, carry out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God, you get this? God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purpose. Now, a response to the reading of God's Word. Let us profess our faith together as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And here's Miss Brittany with our children. Good morning, children and families, and welcome back to Benton First United Methodist Church. We are so glad to have you all with us this morning for another children's time. So this morning, I want to ask you all a question. Have your parents ever asked you to help around the house? Yeah, and have they helped you, asked you to help with chores? I bet that's happened to some of you. This morning, I'm going to tell you a story about a father who had two sons named John and William. So one day, John, or dad, sorry, walked into John's room to find him building a model airplane. John we had a lot of wind last night, and there are leaves scattered all over the yard. Would you please rake the leaves and put them in this trash bag? Dad asked. Aw, oh, Dad, I don't have time to rake the leaves. I'm working on this model airplane, and I really want to finish it today, John answered. The father turned and left the room and went to look for William. He found William watching TV. William? There are a lot of leaves in the yard. Would you please rake the leaves and put them in this trash bag? Dad asked. Sure, I'd be glad to, William answered. Great, said Dad. I'll leave the rake and trash bags in the yard. After his father left, John began to think about what he had asked him to do. I can rake the leaves and still have plenty of time to finish my model airplane later, John thought to himself. He went outside and began raking the leaves. When Dad returned home, he saw John raking leaves. Where's William? Dad asked. I don't know. Last time I saw him, he was watching TV, John replied. When Dad went into the house, guess what he saw? Yep, you guessed it. There sat William, still watching TV. I wonder which of the two sons pleased his father. John, who said he wouldn't rake the leaves, but did? Or William, who said he would break the leaves, but didn't. In our Bible lesson today, Jesus told a similar story to show how different people obey what God has called them to do. In Jesus' parable of the two sons, in my story, one answered, no, but went ahead and worked. The other son answered, yes, but did not go. In telling the story, Jesus wanted us to realize that what we do is more important than what we say we will do. Let me say that one more time. What we do is more important than what we will than what we say we will do. Jesus wants us to answer yes when he tells us to love one another, 
But what he really wants is for us to love one another. Jesus wants us to answer yes when he says, follow me. But what he really wants is for us to follow him. That's the kind of child of God I want to be. Is that the kind of child of God you want to be? I sure hope so. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for everything you give us. We thank you for this beautiful fall weather. We thank you for um, our friends and our family. Lord, we just ask that you continue to be with us. Help us to live out um, a life um, that is worthy um, of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brittany. You know, our scripture today is from Paul's letters to the Philippians. And from the very beginning, if you read this letter, you see that Paul is reminding the Philippians that their entire lives have been changed, that they have been transformed. You see, the little pie was it was a Roman colony, and they were proud to be a Roman colony, proud to be Roman citizens. So they followed every civic law to T, even before they met Paul, even emperor worship. But Paul, it reminds them from the very beginning when he calls them servants of Christ. Those are who are in Christ. He reminds them that they have a new identity, that their new identity is based on their relationship with Christ, that their citizenship is really in the kingdom of God. And this morning... Well, every time we come to worship or every morning that we wake up should be a, a reminder to us that we have been transformed. A reminder to us that our identity has changed. Those of us who gave our life to Christ, we are no longer ours, but Christ. That we died and rose and now we are in Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And worship, you know, worship isn't just something we do because it's our duty. You know, we didn't just when we gave our life to Christ get to join an awesome club that's called church, but that we were transformed, that Christ did more than maybe transform what we do on Saturday nights because we know we're going to get up early Sunday to go to worship. Christ transformed worship for us. You know, our worship isn't about being a spectator. That's not your job. That's not my job in worship. It's not even worship. It's not something we do. Worship when we're in Christ is just who we are. So Paul tells them, now that you are in Christ, you are to have the same mind as Christ, the same attitude as Christ. And let me tell you, Paul here doesn't have just the individuals in mind when he says to have the mind of Christ. He is talking about the community as a whole for the entire community to have the mind of Christ. And I want to challenge you this morning that this is more than just Christ-like humility. And it's definitely more than just the world's attempt at humility. You know, that modest humility that sometimes people try to fake that Oh, that was a great job. Well, it was nothing. I hope you laugh just because I'm really bad at acting, not because. Or that 
humility that the world tries to give that breaks their soul. That hum false humility that is, leads to us having low self-esteem and just constantly putting ourselves down. Or even can lead us to comparing ourselves to others. That's not healthy. That's not humility either. You know, humility is said to be a virtue. A virtue is something that's actually good, that you want to have. You know, we can start with humility about thinking about actually being able to recognize our own gifts, but also see and celebrate the gifts in others that God has given us. And truly celebrate from a place of excitement and not jealousy. But what Paul describes here goes beyond just humility. Christ didn't just humble himself. Christ emptied himself. And that's the mind of Christ that you and I both as individual believers and followers of Jesus Christ, and that's the mind as a church we are called to have. That's the attitude we are called to have. An attitude of willing to empty ourselves. Paul starts off by saying that Jesus, though he was in the form of God and equal to God, did not take his position as something to be exploited, something to take full advantage of, something to cling to totally. But he emptied himself. See, we serve a God and a risen Savior that empties himself. Have you ever noticed from the beginning of time what we humans have been trying to do? When the God we serve loves us so much to empty himself, we're left to our own devices, we are constantly trying to exalt ourselves. Think about Adam and Eve. What did Satan say to them? Oh, God does. The reason God doesn't want you to eat of that tree is because he knows when you eat of it, you will be like him. Almost saying, you will be God's yourself. Isn't that what you really want? You know, you flip over a few more chapters into Genesis, you get the greatest story of the Tower of Babel. And what are we human beings trying to do? We're trying to build a tower to get to heaven, to exalt ourselves. And one of the greatest lines in the Bible, I almost hear God laughing, saying, come on, let us go down and take a look. See, God still had to come down to take a look. But our human nature is to exalt ourselves. But Christ, our Savior empties himself. And that's the mind, that's the attitude that we are called to have as followers, that we're called to have as a church. Now let me take this time just to make a little disclaimer. There have been people in the past that have argued ridiculously that when Christ emptied himself, that he gave up something of his divinity in emptying himself. That is totally untrue. Jesus the Christ here on earth is fully God and fully human. But what Jesus did in emptying himself, he didn't cling to his position. So my question to us this morning, I want you to be asking the Holy Spirit right now, Holy Spirit, come and work in each of us here, each of us watching online, and convict us. What are you clinging to individually? And then I want the Holy Spirit to work in us as a church, and let's talk about, start to work and ask, what are we clinging to as a body of believers. Where is our mind on that human exaltation 
And where does it need to be rewired to have the mind of Christ of Ephesians? Yeah, I want you to take a minute. I want you to think of the greatest thing you could think a person's ever done for you. Here on earth, what is one of the... When you, if I was to come up to you and say, tell me about something great somebody did for you, what would you tell me? You know, I would probably tell you the story of how I've had many, a couple of teachers, mentors in my life who took time out of their busy schedule when they didn't have to, to pour into me. And let me tell you, that is great. But even that compares nothing to what Christ did for you and I. What Christ did for the entire creation. You see, Christ emptied himself. And when he left his throne, when he came to earth, he didn't get a king's royal welcome. You know, remember let's, Christmas? He came to earth as a baby in a manger. He, he wasn't even born royalty. He came to peasants, scared, frightened, what the world considered nobodies. And in his emptying of himself, he spoke. Gave, brought forgiveness of sins. He broke chains. He healed brokenness. He showed us. We, he showed us, those of us who tried to be our own gods. He showed us what the true God's all about. And that's reckless love that just empties itself and pours it out on the whole world that doesn't deserve He didn't cling to his throne. You know, this morning we sung the song, I'm going to lift my hands until I can reach heaven. And I love that line of that song. But I also wonder too, if what, instead of looking more like this, maybe even tiptoes, that we don't look something more like this. That we have one hand towards heaven and another one clinging to something so desperately that we won't empty ourselves up. And I just wonder, to use the words of the song, I wonder if it takes two hands for us to begin to reach heaven. That we need both hands wide open. I think that the same way as a community. You know, we as a church, dream for the church is that people in Benton, maybe the surrounding areas, know that when they walk into Benton First United Methodist Church, that it's a place that heaven and earth meet. That it's a place that Christ is met. But church, we've got to seriously ask the Holy Spirit, is this the way the church is reaching? One hand high and say, absolutely. But the other hand clutched in a mighty fist. What are we clinging to? But how great is our God that, and Jesus that not only when he emptied himself to come to earth, but when he came, he emptied himself. No scripture says humble, but it's got to be emptying himself to be obedient even to death on a cross. And I think in his death on the cross, we see how hard emptying and painful emptying ourselves can be. You remember him, Jesus praying in the garden, sweating drops of blood. Father, if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. But yet, not my will, but your will be done. 
How many of y'all, don't raise your hands, how many of y'all have ever prayed, Father, not my will, but your will be done? Do you know what kind of empty it takes to truly pray that prayer? I think sometimes we, if we're not careful, we try to use that praying God's will, not our will, as some kind of reverse psychology on God. Like, I'm going to say this, but that just, that means you're going to feel bad and give me what I really want. And then after we pray, not my will, but your will be done, we have the audacity, when it is God's will and not our will, we have the audacity to get mad, to blame God. For some people, I think that's even when they decide God's not real. Well, God, I prayed your will be done, and it didn't line up with mine, so you must not be real. It takes, those are not words to be thrown around. It's not playing some kind of psychological game with God. He's, if he wanted to, he's probably better at that than us. But what type of posture in prayer does it take to empty herself to pray? I just imagine somebody laying out before the cross and pouring themselves out and saying, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I empty myself. Help me be obedient to whatever it is that you have before me. That's the type of emptiness we're called to have as both individuals and as a community. To be brave enough to pray, not my will, but thy will be done. And then still be obedient. But Paul doesn't stop there. And Paul says, since Jesus emptied himself, then God gave him the name above every name. That there's power in the name of Jesus. And did you catch it? That at the name of Jesus, every creature in heaven, on earth, and under earth. Paul's got it all covered. It doesn't say only believers. It says all of creation. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is surely Lord and Savior. That's how powerful our Savior, who emptied himself, is. That at the name of Jesus, not just his fans, not just his fanfare or his followers go crazy, but no, the whole creation bows and confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. So Paul says, continue working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Continue to live a life that you're living in Christ. Let every aspect of your life show that you are in Christ. Live it in awe. Live it in awe of how amazing God is. Let God overwhelm you with his goodness. How many seek out those moments. You know, when we empty ourselves, where we have more of those moments while we just stand and look at God and think, wow, God, you're amazing. See, when we empty ourselves, I think we start seeing God more. See, then one of my favorite verses says, don't you know that God is the one who both puts the desire in your heart to live for him, that it's the Holy Spirit who's put that desire there. 
and helps us live it. And when we have the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ as a church and individuals, there's less wrestling. You know, you ever felt called and you wonder, is that me or is that God? But the more we work to empty in, the more it comes obvious that it is Christ in us. You see, the more empty we become of ourselves, the more aware we are of God's presence. You know, emptying yourself, when I say that, I think our first thought is the world's ideal of emptiness. It almost glorifies that where you've run yourself ragged, where you've exhausted yourself. And that's not wholly emptying. I'm not even sure that that's actually a thing, but I think I just made up those words. That's not the emptiness that we're called to as Christians. You see, the emptiness that we're called to is always filled. We're called to empty ourselves and be filled with Christ and let Christ overflow. And that's the cycle and the pattern that while we walk this earth that we are in, we empty ourselves and Christ fills us and overflows. It's just a constant 360. You ever thought about... Maybe why Jesus chose fishermen? I mean, their resume is not particularly outstanding. You know, if if you were looking around to find someone to be one of your followers, they'd probably be the last people you and I would pick. I don't know, I did have a friend tell me, they found out the title of my sermon, said, well, you know, Leah, they are good storytellers, and they're good at stretching the truth a little bit. So that could be a plus. But, but wouldn't somebody like Nicodemus, who had the studied, he had the degrees, he had the prestige, He knew how to follow rules. Wouldn't he be a better follower? Everything about him screams yes. But maybe the problem was Nicodemus was too full of Nicodemus. Maybe there was too much power, too much knowledge, too much prestige. And maybe those fishermen were just emptied enough, empty enough to believe that maybe they could be born again. The mind of Christ calls us to empty ourselves of ourselves, to be filled with Christ. And as we do that as a body in a church and become more aware of the presence of God as, you know, I love how the Holy Spirit works. As Brittany said in her children's message, our yes, we say yes, and we do it. And I think even more importantly to our yes is as Mother Teresa says, that we say yes without even God consulting us first. One of her famous quotes is, it's not about what you have, but about how empty you are. Because when you're empty, that's when you empty yourself of yourself, that's when Christ comes and fills. So my challenge to us this week, maybe this month, is I want us to covenant together as followers or brothers and sisters of Christ and as a church to start seriously praying, God, empty me of myself. God, what am I clinging to? How am I like this? And not like this. I I want you to pray for our church as well. Pray, Jesus, Jesus, How's our church like this? 
God, because we so desire and we want to be like this. And I, if you're a journal, I encourage you to use the prayer journal. You know, the thing about prayer is it's a two-way street. Pray that and then listen. And write down the honest truth, what you feel like Jesus is telling you. And maybe sometime in the future we will have a service where we let go of what we're clinging to. So our hands can be fully open to God. And I also invite you to pray without ceasing with me for us to be empty and for our church. And one of the great ways to pray without ceasing, because many people think, how in the world am I supposed to do that? It's by breath prayers. Just pray as you think about your breathing and pray as you're breathing. It can be simple as Jesus, I breathe out Leah, and I breathe in Christ. It could be as simple as, God, I breathe out Benton First United Methodist Church, and we breathe in Christ into our community. Emptying is not easy, because when we empty ourselves of ourselves, it can be painful. Because there's nothingness. As one author puts it, but know that Jesus, let Jesus help you smile at your nothingness, at your emptiness. Because you know that that's what Jesus is going to feel. And before I pray, I'm going to try something. Notice the key word is try, <laughs> and it's okay. But before I pray, you know, I hope y'all know the song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You know, a sanctuary is where God dwells. And that's our prayer today. So I'm going to invite you just to sing with me. Just let our voices rise to God and sing that before I pray for us. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and Gracious, mighty God, that is our prayer. That is the prayer of our heart. That we both as individual followers, but as a community, that we, you would prepare us to be a sanctuary. And God, may we give thanksgiving along the way. God, may we be the sanctuary that has both hands reached out to the kingdom of God. That people come and find hope and healing and grace and mercy that is in Christ Jesus. God, as we follow your lead and empty ourselves and let go of what we're clinging to and become, become obedient, even obedient to tough stuff, even obedient to rocky roads, help us know that you are right there with us. Help us be aware of your presence. And all honor and glory is to you. And we lift up high the name that is above all names in which we pray. Jesus, amen. Amen. Would you please stand and join us as we sing our closing song, In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is
Just a quick reminder that next week we'll start two services and we will have nursery available as well. Now receive this benediction. Go forth and may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit comfort us, strengthen us as we allow them to work within us to empty us so that we may be filled with them.
go in peace. Amen.